Hey guys, Megan with another YouTube video, and it is Wednesday, which means I am stuck in a parking lot for quite a few bit of hours. I did get one, two, three, four Japanese assignments done for homework, and I actually did them right this time. I did them before, but I did a horrible with my verb conjugation, and anyone learning a new language knows that verb conjugation is one of the biggest things. So I was able to get that fully done and out of the way and uh, did some AP psychology homework as well, which is just vocabulary. It is Both of those are due today. Um, and then I might do another assignment after this just to get it out of the way, but I don't really know. I might do another psychology and then some more sociology and things like that, but who knows as of right now, I do not. Uh, any background noise in the form of large machinery and backing up noises, I must apologize for the area in which I am sitting. They are currently doing sewage for the resi the, I'm sorry, the residential area going up across the street that they cut down almost an entire forest for. Um, so I do apologize if you hear that annoying like backing up beep beep sound that almost every large machine is required to have. Uh, but that's pretty much enough stalling for now. Um, I'm going to get into the model that we're looking at today. Today we are taking a look at the Frostbite Machine Pistol Version 2 Mark II. And I say that because back in the infancy of this channel a long, long time ago, I built this little pistol called the Tiger Shark. Uh, I remember it vividly because I really liked the thing. It was a small 22 caliber pistol that shot full auto. It had a stock on it, I believe. Um, and then it had like a really interesting feature that I will talk about in this video. And there was also the fact that it was painted a really interesting color scheme. It had a white, um, like full white base coat with bright red speckled throughout it, I believe maybe dark red as well, and I called it the bloodshot camouflage, or like a bloody snow camouflage and things like that. Uh, I have since then moved away from doing Lego camouflage. It's really hard to do because the bricks are naturally just brickish, so every single camouflage you ever do with Legos always turns out to be a digital camouflage, and it's kind of hard to do. Um, so I have moved away to that, and I've moved into what we have today, which is what we're going to be taking a look at. So LD is going to load up. Hopefully this does not make a sound. And it did not. So this is the Frostbite Machine Pistol Mark 1 Complete Version 2. I have since switched the name between the different versions. So it used to be the Tiger Shark. I've now switched it over to Frostbite Machine Pistol. And then I've also changed the caliber round that these take. Or I should probably say I've changed how the internals on this gun actually work. Um, so going over basic functions so far, this gun is still fully automatic. As you can tell, this is a fairly long hand gun as well. It's not short and stubby like a TAC 45 or a Heckler & Coke 45. Um, this one is a little bit longer, it's nice extended, has the elongated look to it and looks really good and decently futuristic, which is kind of what I was going for here. As you can see, the lower receiver and the frame itself is a black, the, uh, sorry, the upper receiver is a dark red, your slide is the dark red I should say, most pistols don't have upper or lower receivers. The hand grip suggested by Lego Guns Trilogy from uh, our little conversations that we usually have. Uh, I rounded it out a little bit so that it has this white underlay to it, kind of like the original Tiger Shark, so it's paying homage to it. But it's also got the curves to it so that it feels nice and good. And it has ribbing in it like a football does so that you get an extra grip on it. Speaking of footballs, deflation. There we go. All that needs to be said right now. And I just dropped my Sharpie, so if you heard that, I apologize. Um, but this is an interesting weapon because you've probably already noticed it, but there's a weird jut out right underneath the barrel. So I'm going to move you guys a little bit. Sorry about that if you heard that. And we're going to go ahead and get into the review of this model, starting in the back here and then working our way forward. 
So here we have our little canted pistol grip. I really like doing this type of design. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in what you want to do. You can do these side panels that are nice and strong. You can do these, uh, what do you call it? These ribbings here for your fingers so that they don't slide up and down and you're not losing too much uh, grip on your pistol grip itself. Um, like I said, these ribbings are curved. It's the nice, nice curve into them. It's got the white underlay. It looks really nice from the side view, the profile. It's got the white, white, white with the dark red all around it, kind of holding it all together. The black undertone that just makes it really nice. It has enough room for a magazine that is four studs. This way? Kind of weird to say. So it's like a normal pistol grip that you would make with other ones, except it looks much better because it actually like cants up into where it needs to go. The back of this is nice and curved. It fits your hand quite well, if I do say so myself. Coming up off of the back of this grip, it comes up and curves back here again so that when your hammer is coming down, it's not hitting your finger and your uh, back of your hand is not sliding up in front of the slide as it's pushed back because that won't feel nice either. There is no slide lock on this weapon on either side. I have decided to forego that on this model. Uh, I might put one in later on if I'm not doing anything and I need something to do, but I bet, don't bet on it. Uh, the back here does have a working hammer. I went for a different design. Instead of doing like a curved hammer, I went with a really a flat one that gets nice and low to the profile of the gun, um, which also allows for your slide to slide back like it needs to. It's really interesting, and I like it actually if you believe it or not uh, as you can see here is your firing pin your hammer will strike this and that'll hit the bullet and send it flying these two green dots here are your rear sight and they look decently like this with the front green sight up there as well they glow in the dark they're of course night sights because your night sights are what you need for a uh, nighttime operations because they amplify the light you can actually see your sights instead of it being a black that you black or white that you can't see and then you're just kind of stuck there aiming blindly um, moving on into the back here there is no grips in the receiver itself it's a nice smooth receiver there is a safety on it though so you have a slide mounted safety um, so down for fire up for safety of course of course you do have your working trigger with the rubber band system in it so that when you're pulling the trigger it resets back forward like an actual gun does so you're, you can pull it multiple times without having to uh, worry about pushing it back forward after every time you pull it. Uh, the top of the slide is curved off really well. I really do like these curves. I like them a lot. <laughs> These vent holes here are for your upper recoil. If you're shooting in full auto, it's kind of a pain. So here you have basically a built-in compensator that's going to push gas up. It's going to prevent your barrel from getting too far up in the air. It makes it a little bit more controllable so that you have a nice predictable recoil uh, pattern and you don't have to worry about anything along that line. You do have the barrel on the end here. It is curved. It does go all the way back to about here I believe uh, in terms of how long it is uh, you can pull the slide all the way back and all you're gonna see is this barrel it's not you know built to the point where you're gonna be seeing any of the internals like the uh, rubber band system that's about here I believe or uh, the guide system that's about here on the model uh, you're not gonna be able to see any of that all of it's gonna be barrel uh, underneath the barrel we have our guide spring. This is technically what would push our slide back forward after we've uh, shot the gun, um, but we just do a rubber band, most of us do anyhow, inside of the gun. So this is just for aesthetics. Uh, this pin right here stays in place as the slide and the dark red prick here slide back. So you have your pin staying in place. It looks really nice. It looks much more realistic. And then we get into the main cool little feature of this weapon. There is a spare magazine holder underneath the barrel and it also acts almost as a handguard if you were to two hand this. Uh, there is glass inserts on these sides, on both sides, uh, just so that you can 
if your magazines have like the little glass slits, glass slits in them that you can see how many rounds you have left, you can use these to see how many rounds you have left. Um, this magazine should actually be here in the grip and there should be another one sitting here. So there should be two magazines, but it is really difficult to get the magazine in this style of grip when you've uh, built it like this. So I've had to leave it out so far. The bottom of the magazine has these curves on it. It's a rubber bumper so that when you, if you ever drop it on the ground, you don't have to worry about horrible damage mistakes on it or anything of that sort. Uh, it's nice and curved here in the front. It's curved here in the back, which actually follows the uh, trigger guard here so that it looks really, really nice. There is a tactical rail on the bottom of it, and it holds an extra magazine. So if you guys are ever out on like an environment or a survival situation and you ever need to draw your weapon and you shoot one magazine, you at least have your second magazine with you. Uh, let's say your plane gets shot down in Syria and you lose your bag which had all your magazines in it but you still have the gun. Now you have two magazines and you're not better off than having the whole bag but you are better than what you would only having a single magazine. So this allows operators to have two magazines on them, make reload changes pretty quick because it's pretty simple to just reach in front of your barrel, pull the magazine out and good to go. Uh, speaking of the ammunition for this weapon, because you guys are, this is probably a burning question in your mind. There is no shell ejection port on this weapon anywhere. In fact, this weapon shoots what is called caseless ammunition. It shoots the entire bullet. It's all self-contained. There is nothing that comes out of this weapon at all. So there's no hot brass going to the right on all your combat buddies. There's no hot brass being dropped on the ground. On the ground. There's no traces of the bullet anywhere, so crimes would be much easier with this weapon, but that's probably a bad thing, but eh, it's all fictional, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's a really neat feature. The caliber itself, it still shoots 22 caseless ammunition because 22 ammunition on full auto is pretty easy to control, and the military wouldn't be able to really use it as like a self-defense weapon, like your 45 ACPs being shot at people and things like that. But I'm thinking like if you're an Air Force pilot and you accidentally get shot down and you have this, you have a small hunting handgun that you can switch over to semi-auto so that you can shoot it once, get your rabbit, cook it up, good to go. And then if it ever comes down to it and you've lost your 45 or something like that, you have a fully automatic weapon that you can use to defend yourself with. So that's my thinking along the lines of like a kind of a uh, survival pistol, if you would. And it looks really nice, too. And I really do like the design. Um, but pretty much other than that, that's about it for this weapon. Uh, shoots full auto, 22 caseless ammunition. The special feature is the fact that it has a spare magazine up underneath the barrel on the weapon itself. It's pretty easy to take out. You just pull out. As always, uh, the slide does move backwards, but it's kind of hard to do because of the uh, color changes and everything that we've done on this. Uh, so let me uh, quickly color change this back over to what it needs to be. So for the slide to move back, of course, you just grab it like so. Sometimes they just make it so difficult.
So it moves back to about there, which is pretty long. Uh, I believe it's like a total of uh, it's a two. That's a total of six studs right there that it moves back, which is pretty long. Usually you only need to move back four, but I really like the looks of this and it looks really nice. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If my friend does indeed do a time lapse, it will be maybe at the end of this video, maybe not. I don't know, but just you know, look out for that because that should be up sooner or later. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Like I said, thanks for watching. Remember, comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you guys want to see more of this model, check out my website at bluejaythemeister.weebly.com. I promise you it's easy, cheap, and free to visit. Uh, I get uh, benefited each and every time you visit, which means I will get more and more money that I can spend on Legos to start building real-life models so that I don't have to use this LDD and screen recording software and things like that. I can use a normal camera with a real life model and show off features much, much better with that. So yeah, that really doesn't hurt you guys to spend like two seconds going to that website, checking everything out that you want to check out, and then leaving. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.